So hi everyone, today's class is about uh, introduction to linguistics. So just a brief recap uh, about what we did previously. So we started looking at linguistics as the scientific study of language. Then we tackled, of course, the branches of linguistics, starting with phonetics, phonology, and morphology. Today we'll have to look at another branch of linguistics called syntax. This is for most linguists considered as the most important branch and the most important field of study in linguistics because it is due to syntax that we combine words, phrases and senses uh, in a unique way. So syntax also allows us to determine the word order and the basic sentence structure. Uh, we will see that each language has a specific syntax which helps its both its speakers and listeners to know exactly which senses are meaningful, which senses are coherent and which senses are perfectly well formed senses. So let me move to the definition of syntax. Here I have at the, at the first one, I have just a simple one. It is defined as the arrangement of words and phrases in a language to create. What, we crea what do we create when you arrange, of course, words and phrases and constituents? We create well-structured or well-formed senses. And this is the purpose, of course, or the aim or the objectives of syntactic rules or syntax as a whole. So I have here uh, four senses. The three are in red, meaning that they are in grammatical, meaning that they are not uh, well formed. So let's have a look at them, please. Number one, we have flying the bird is in the sky. Number two, we have in the sky flying is the bird. And number three, we have flying the bird in the sky is. So the three of them are to be uh, considered as ill-formed senses, as not perfectly well-formed ones, because they do not respect the syntactic rules. Uh, on the opposite, we can see that the uh, number four and or the green one is well well formed or a perfectly well formed sentence. So what, what I can say from just these examples is that uh, um, as we, the basic unit of uh, uh, phonology is the phoneme, the basic unit of morphology is the morpheme. Just from these senses, from these examples, we can say that the basic unit of syntax is the sentence. Hence, I may say that the study of syntax covers essentially the study of the way meaningful elements are organized in a sentence. In other words, or to put it differently, a syntactic analysis deals with the external arrangement as opposed to the internal structure of words within the boundaries of a sentence. But here I have an important issue to speak about. When we speak about syntax, what do you mean by uh, saying that one is having syntactic knowledge of his uh, uh, proper language or his native language? So to have a syntactic knowledge of a particular language, meaning to uh, have the ability to understand, the ability to produce an infinite number of senses we have never heard before. And this is the case, of course, of children while acquiring their mother tongue without being exposed to any formal context or without being guided or oriented by anyone. Okay, so uh, to have also or uh, to say that we're having a syntactic knowledge meaning having the ability to determine the grammatical relations in a sentence. And you have the example here, we have Mary hired Billy, or Bill, I'm sorry, versus Bill hired Mary. So the first sentence, we may say that Mary 
uh, has the function of a subject, but it has the function of a complement in the second sentence. The same thing for Bill. In the first sentence, it occupies the position of a complement, while in the first one, it has the position of a subject. So it is through sentence that we can, of course, determine the grammatical relation of these uh, constituents. Also, having a syntactic knowledge means having a knowledge about the word order. And I just mentioned this at the beginning. Okay, so every language has a general word order. Example here, I may speak about the word order of English, which is, of course, an SVO order. And this is, of course, the case of the example, uh, Mary hired Bill, we have an SVO order okay to have also a syntactic knowledge meaning having a knowledge about the agreement that may happen between a verb and its subject let me go back again to this example and say for instance if i put this sentence in a present simple and i may say mary hire bill what's uh, incorrect or ungrammatical about that is that there is no agreement between mary and bill so we should have the third person singular s to uh, have an or to attain this agreement between Mary and Bill. So Mary hires Bill. This is uh, the agreement between a subject and a verb. And of course, we have an agreement between determinant and noun, noun and pronoun, etc. We have, uh, of course, uh, many cases. Uh, to have also a syntactic knowledge meaning is to have a hierarchical structure. So what modifies what? Uh, in a sentence and as you all know uh, having a knowledge about English meaning having a knowledge about for instance the adjective which usually comes the preceding the noun in order to mod modify that noun and the same for the adverbs which are said to come after the verbs in order to modify of course uh, the verbs okay let me move to uh, uh, examples now to clarify more right the concepts or the branch of linguistics syntax here i i provide you with uh, the famous example which was coined by chomsky colorless green ideas sleep comfortably so and i provide you with other of course similar senses like a verb crampled the milk or i gave the question an angry so at first glance, you may wonder what happens to these senses, okay? It means that when I say colorless green idea sleep comfortably, uh, yes, I may say that it has no sense. It is meaningless. But uh, what's striking, what's striking about the three examples is that uh, they are perfectly well formed senses meaning that they basically they basically illustrates the importance of syntax in that uh, though they uh, violate uh, the rules of semantics in the sense that they don't have any sense or meaning but at the same time they are perfectly well formed senses and of course when i say for instance comfortably sleep ideas green colorless or milk the crampets verb uh, or the question i uh, i uh, and gave egg angry that will of course sound uh, incorrect in terms of syntax because uh, uh, if i go back to my first sentence colorless green ideas sleep comfortably i have a well respected rule of the use of adjectives I have two adjectives colorless green right the uh, for uh, precede and noun ideas and I have of course the adverb comfortably that modifies the verb sleep now I move to an important element, uh, right, uh, which we should, uh, I guess, uh, start with while, of course, trying to define syntax as another branch of linguistics. And this is called syntactic categories. So here I have to differentiate between word level categories and phrase level categories. What are word level categories? Are categories like nouns, verbs, 
adjectives, adverbs. They are called word level categories. And what are phrase level categories? When uh, those categories or when I have to expand the noun, the verb, the adjective, the adverb into other phrases, they become heads and thus they form phrase level categories. Le let me just uh, illustrate this by the following example. I have company. So company here is just a word level category is an N, right? When I uh, extend this noun to, with the, an indefinite article, it becomes a company. Then when I extend it with uh, adding an adjective, it becomes a large company and then other uh, that large company, meaning that a word can be expanded to form a phrase level category. So how it is represented in syntax? This NP a company can be represented as follows. I have an NP, I have a determiner, an A, and M. And here, just uh, for your knowledge, I put here, right, it w if we have these uh, parentheses, it means that uh, those elements are optional, meaning that uh, the NP may have just the head N, and it is considered as a noun phrase just by an N, like, like for instance, company, right? Just if I take company alone, it's of course may be represented as an NP with an N. But if I extend it of course, I may add determiner, right, uh, adjective, and so on. So the NP may be, right, represented as a determiner, adjective, and a noun, or may be represented as a personal noun, or may be represented as a pronoun, or may be represented as an NP sentence, like the example here, the fact that you are here. The same thing if I move, of course, to another category, right? So I, I would say that uh, it's uh, the, the meaning that I can generalize the rule to all categories. And I'm here just providing some examples. I cannot provide all the, 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 the uh, or I cannot speak about all the categories. A VP, for instance, should contain at least its head, right? So each phrase contains a head, right? A VP contains a head V, and this verb may be optionally right followed by a noun phrase, an adjectival phrase, an adverb phrase, a prepositional phrase or a, a sentence. Like the example here, for instance, I have John slept. So I have a VP just with its head, the verb. I have John wrote an article. I have a VP or verbal phrase with a verb followed by a complement or by another NP, which is a noun phrase. I have a John wrote an article about coronavirus so i have here a vp writes headed by a verb and followed or extended by another np and another pp right or prepositional phrase so a significant aspect of these categories or the representation is the universality okay it, it seems that languages tend to have all these categories which actually allows the formulation of syntactic rules and the representation of the hierarchical structure of sentences meaning that this representation is not a representation limited to the English language, but it can, of course, be extended to other languages. So it is a universal representation. And that's what's really very interesting about syntax. When you assimilate uh, the rules of syntax, you can write to know or you can to uh, um, have, of course, uh, also the ability to understand other languages. I move to the last element of today's lecture and this is or this has to do with phrase structure rules. So what do we mean by phrase structure rules? Uh, those are rules that determine what goes on into a phrase or a constituent. Those are rules that tell us how our constituents ordered. Okay? Those are rules that tell us how 
we should represent constituents, we should respect the order of constituents. So what's a constituent? A constituent is a word or group of words that function as a unit and can make up larger grammatical units, right? We can expand as much as possible, of course, the words in a constituent. But we have to respect, of course, the hierarchy of the sentences and, uh, of course, uh, the, the grammatical structure of the sentence. So what's this, the general schema here? I may say the general schema of phrase structure rule is X, Y, and Z, while X consists of Y followed by Z. It's not that Z consists of X followed by Y, but we do have to respect this schema, X, uh, consists of Y followed by Z. And the example here I have a little boy in a bubble. How it is presented to represented through the phrase structure rules like an NP, determiner, adjective, M and PP, like a prepositional phrase. Okay? So as an illustration that phrase structure rules are capable of generating, right, syntactically correct but semantically incorrect sentences. And we may go back, right? Let me just go back to the first uh, example that yes colorless green ideas sleep comfortably meaning that the phrase structure rule generates syntactically appropriate sentence but semantically inappropriate sentence and this is the rule of phrase structure rule right so uh, i recapitulate i said that as an illustration that phrase structure rules are capable of generating syntactically correct but semantically incorrect senses phrase structure rules break senses into of course their constituent parts and the constituents of course may be broken down into other constituents and these constituents are often represented as three structures. So in the coming section, we will look at the tree structure. We will look at how syntax trees are really a neat graphic tool to chart sentence structure and make sense of word order. So I would say thank you very much. And if you have any questions or if you have any concerns regarding the material I've just been presenting or if I have created a certain certain confusion in your mind, it would be an opportunity in the next lecture for me to clear that up for you and to give more um, clarification to the rules. Thank you very much.